Hello guys, Bud here with Dependable Lawn Care and yesterday I finally got to bring home the FW15 and this is the uh, front caster version as opposed to the fixed wheel version. Um, to be perfectly honest, I've, I've only found a few pictures of this mower uh, with the caster wheels on it and so this is really the first time seeing it in person with the caster wheels. I've seen the, uh, the models out already with the uh, fixed wheels and it seems like guys are really loving them. But anyway, uh, this is it. This is the beast, guys. Um, I'll just go around and, and kind of talk about some of the features and show you a few things on it. Uh, I'll start with the caster wheels since that's something that's, uh, that's different with this model. Uh, for one, they have a locking feature. So you see this, uh, this groove right here. So if you turn that in line with your, with your arm, you can pull this pin out and it allows this lock to go down and it locks that caster in place. And then you just put the pin back in. So if you, if you wanted the fixed wheels for certain situations, you could do that. Um, and then if you want the, uh, the casters to do their thing, then you know, obviously you'll take that off. So uh, I'll have to look. I think the front tires, or the you know, they're not they're not tires. They're the uh, the uh, no flat or flat free. You know, uh, kind of sort of similar to the uh, Michelin wheels. Um, just a, a scaled down version, but you know, you never have to worry about a flat. Um, you probably never wear them out. I mean, they're pretty. Uh, pretty incredible. I really like that they're putting those on this machine. I believe they're a 10 inch though in diameter. And then the, uh, the rear tires, one of the things that I really like about this about this setup, um, they've got a 13 by 5 rear tire on this. Uh, it is pneumatic so you know I've never had a I've never had a flat on uh, a walk behind mower but I guess it could happen. Um, but anyway, it's a, it's a pneumatic tire, 13 inch pneumatic tire. And I mean, that is just beefy when it comes to a drive tire for a, basically a push mower on steroids. You know, I don't, I don't know how you could, how you could go wrong or do better than that. So, uh, I know there are other videos out on guys showing you how to adjust the deck up and down, but there's only one point to adjusting the deck. Um, this is a handle right here so basically you grab this handle with your right hand and put just a little bit of up pressure you know pick up on the mower just slightly and, and I do mean slightly because it really doesn't take hardly any um, manpower if you will to adjust that and then you just pull the pin and move it it goes from one to eight um, the actual cutting height I believe is from one inch to five inches so I'll actually, uh, I'm going to use my blade measurer and uh, that measures my blade cut height. So I'm going to get it on concrete, uh, find out where three inches is at, and uh, that's probably the setting I'll leave it on, whatever number that is. But I'm probably going to figure out, you know, like anywhere from two and a half to three and a half, um, just so I know what number corresponds with what measurement for my own purposes. You know, if I'm if I'm mowing something and I want the cut height to match with my uh, with my stand-ons, then I'm going to need to know, you know, especially like three, three and a half inches, maybe two and a half in some circumstances. So, so that's that's it on that. Um, let me show you the kind of the close-up on the arm. I really like them. I mean, they just this mower has such a beefy, tough look to it anyway. But I really like the uh, the craftsmanship and the uh, engineering that goes into building these things. I mean, they're just, it's one of the things that caught my eye when I first saw them and told myself, you know, I want one of those because um, I just, I love the way they're put together. So it's got the Honda GXV 390 OHV. Um, I have tried to figure out the horsepower and I've, I've come up with everything from 10 horse to a 13 horse. So if somebody knows the answer to that, um, I'd like to know. 
just out of curiosity it really doesn't matter any one of those engines is going to be more than powerful enough it's just i know that honda does their uh, their cc measurements different than other other brands so i've heard that a, a honda you know 10 horse rating is more like a 12 horse rating on any other engine so i just i don't really don't know what engine size it is but 32 inch cut this is the fw15 hydro um, it does have the uh, the factory chute on the side of it and uh, honestly guys i'm not a chute fan not that there's anything wrong with it i just i don't use them so i'm going to be taking that chute off um, in fact before i put it on the trailer to put it into regular use um, the chute's coming off one because it takes up space um, two because i'm just not going to use it and i'd rather just take it off than have it propped up all the time so i'm going to pull that off and i might see about getting some kind of a chute block that i can open and close for the side if i need it on the uh on the controls your throttle is right here on the on the handlebar so of course you got fast and slow but instead of it just uh going from fast to slow if you take it all the way back to the stop position it actually shuts the engine off so that's your that's your engine shut off right there so you know the turtle would basically be your idle and then behind the turtle is uh, actually shutting the mower off now on the blade engagement this is the handle for the blade engagement but you actually can't engage the blades without flipping this lever up so and you can do it with one hand but you flip that lever up and then you can and you can engage the the blades like so so it's just a kind of a safety feature there and then you've got on your speed setting one through four you know one being the slowest four being the fastest and it's uh it just kind of gives you a, a ground speed that you want to walk at or mow at um, operation is really simple um, pushing down right here is your forward speed and then you can push up it's actually easier on this side you can push up for reverse or it also has little little pegs on both sides right here um, that you can use for reverse you can just pull those back so you see when you pull those back the handle comes up so so down is forward and then up is reverse or back it's reverse um, pretty simple i mean honestly you know i've watched guys handle these for the first time and they just they're super easy to use um, they, they've kept it about as simple as they can so uh, start up you do have a, a choke right here so you pull your choke out and then you've got your your pull start um, i don't know if they're going to come out with a uh, electric start option um, to be perfectly honest i probably wouldn't get it if they did just because it's not hard to, to pull start one of these mowers to begin with and two it'd be one more battery to maintain and uh, i'd just as soon have the pull start and not have to mess with another battery so uh, down here on this area um, so right here is the lever that controls forward and reverse so this is the bump stop for reverse right here it's just a bolt that adjusts up and down and then that's the forward side you can see it hits the bolt right there so um, you can adjust those a little bit if you want to speed up or slow down um, the movement in a gear and the guys at the shop when they uh, uncrated it and everything they went ahead and, and preset it to the to the factory recommendations and uh, and then he told me you know you can you can fine-tune it when you start using it the uh, the handlebars move up and down um, right now it's in the tallest setting which is a little bit high for me um, it's, it's like above my stomach actually right now so so i'll probably move that down a little bit um, my son is shorter than me my wife is shorter than me and if either one of them are using it it'll definitely have to be moved down a little bit for them for their comfort and yeah, back here you can see the uh the hydro area so here's the here's the top pulley on the hydro and it's got a little little vent opening right there and the whole back side is vented for the uh for the hydro drive and uh, you can actually see over here on this side the sprockets and uh, 
sprockets in the chain drive for the actual drive system so but it's all it's all cased in and um, you know ventilated but well protected you know I like that not that I plan on getting crazy with it but but stuff does happen I mean you guys that uh, mow for a living or or whatever you know that sometimes you just get into situations that you definitely didn't plan for so stuff happens but uh let me prop this thing up and we'll look at the uh, underside of it, show you the uh, blade layout and whatever else we can see from the bottom. Okay guys, it's propped up so we can take a look underneath. So here's the, uh, here's the layout. You've got two, two blade system and I'll show you up close the, the spindles. Um, there is a grease dirt right there on the spindle. So they are greasable. Spindles are not sealed up. Um, I don't know how long the blades are without measuring them, but uh, it does have the Marbane steel blades, uh, medium, I believe they're medium lift, they might be the high lift, but um, I've been running those factory blades on the Z3s, and I have over 60 hours on both of them now. And, uh, well, no, I take that back. I actually have over 70 hours on both of them now and uh, those blades are nice I mean they're like any other blade you hit a rock with them you know you're, you're gonna dull them but um, but they do seem to take quite a bit more abuse than um, the standard steel blades that I've ran in the past I, I really do think that the Marbane blades are superior that's just my opinion I'm also not in an environment where there's a lot of sand um, you know it gets pretty dusty here in the in the summertime when things dry up but we don't have the sand that wears on the blades like you do in the, in the southern regions so um, for us it's just freaking rocks I mean just just straight up rocks so anyway there's a little baffle right there it's it's actually looking at the underside of the deck it looks exactly like a smaller version of my uh, my 52 and my 61 inch mower under the deck so uh, looks pretty nice and then down here give you a closer look at the, uh, the hydro so there's a that's the pulley on the on the right right here that's the pulley that engages the blades so you can see where it comes around um, trying to give you guys kind of a, a close-up look maybe something that you haven't haven't seen before so uh, and then here's the here's the hydro looks like they've got a wrap it's just a plastic wrap on the uh, axle on both sides um, chain drive there's your your sprocket system you've got a an idler, idle idler sprocket down here that just takes the uh, takes the tension out of the chain so that there's no slack in it and then you can see the bottom of the, the hydros I know there's not a whole lot to see from under here but um, it's the kind of stuff that I I enjoy I love seeing how these things are put together and again you know the engineering and uh, design that goes into them so so that's the underside of the deck and then we'll look at these look at these spindles and, wheels up close I really like these things uh, they're they're super lightweight you're never gonna get a flat I mean they're just they're freaking awesome and they're huge I mean they're you know they've got to be at least a 10 inch at least a 10 inch tire and then, like I said it's got 13s on the back so I mean they didn't uh, they didn't skimp on the wheel size by any means and here's your pivot point and I believe it's just a sealed bearing I don't see any I don't see any grease cert for that which you know no heavier than that is there really doesn't need to be and then here's the uh, here's the arm and show you that locking mechanism a little bit better you can see the, the groove down there where it locks and then this is the piece so basically what you do is you pull your pin right here okay and then this just goes down. Okay, so if that's pushed down, now your wheel is locked. So, and then you just put your pin back through 
to uh, lock it in place. It's kind of tricky with one hand. You guys know how that is when you're trying to video something. But anyway, so so then it's a fixed caster, if that's what you want. And that was kind of the thing I liked about it, guys, is, you know, with the fixed caster version, that's that's the only option you have. It's, it's fixed, period. And with this version, um, I get to try it both ways. So... You know, I think more than likely I'm going to I'm gonna like the swivel caster option, and I'll keep it that way. But if I decided that I liked the locks better, or maybe for a larger property, if I'm going to be striping and I want, you know, I want them locked, then I can lock it, but I have the option. And that's, that's kind of the, that was kind of the selling point for me, was having the option. Um, so, it's got a small gas tank on it. Of course, we're looking at everything from an angle now. Um, I bet that gas tank doesn't hold, you know, half to three-fourths of a gallon of gas. But on this engine, that should run for a long freaking time. One other thing that I needed to point out um, as far as features go. Uh, right here is the hydro release. Right now it's released. You just pull it up. So push it down and the hydro is engaged again. Pull it up and you're disengaged. So... I've already been using that, just uh, just kind of wheeling it around here while I'm doing my video. So, um, pretty pretty easy function. Anyway, um, I don't want to talk your guys' ear off too much. I've probably already recorded long enough, but I just wanted to uh, wanted to show it to you guys while it's nice and clean before I before I uh, mess with it at all. Um, like I said, it just I actually got it home last night, and it was already too late to mess with it. So. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and take it over to the uh, to the garage and figure out my deck height um, probably adjust the handlebars down to where they're comfortable and I'll probably go ahead and remove the uh, the flap on the side which just for you guys just for your for your knowledge um, you've got the spring the pin and then there's a, uh, a little pin and a washer right here so it's literally as easy as pulling that pin and then just pulling the pulling the bar out um, so nothing to it and I'll hang on to that you know I may decide later on down the road that I want to use it but I doubt it um, I, I never do you know all the mowers that I've ever had that's the first thing that comes off and <clears throat> and I don't do that because I'm not safety conscious because that's really not it at all um, I do it because it gets in the way for me and um, for me there just really isn't a purpose in it now I don't I don't necessarily like to run an open shoot which you know if you guys have seen my other mowers and my other videos you know that I've got shoot blocks on on everything um, but until I figure out some type of a shoot block for it, it I probably am gonna run it open all right guys I figured out the uh, the measurements on the deck height so start with first thing I, I move the handlebars down it was in the top hole and there are four holes so they're spaced about uh, not even not even a half inch on center apart um, I moved it down to the third hole and that seems to be pretty comfortable for me so it should work pretty good for Gage and my wife uh, and I took the shoot off so it's just an open shoot now and I played with the uh, deck height to figure that out. So right now it's set on number four. Let me get a little closer so you can see the numbers better. Okay, so right now it's set on number four. <clears throat> number four is exactly three inches cut height. So each number is half an inch. That's what I figured out. I went from one to eight and they're exactly half inch increments. So three is actually two and a half, two is two inches, and one is one and a half. Okay, so it goes one and a half, two, two and a half, three, three and a half, four, four and a half, five. So it goes from one and a half inches to five inches in half inch increments. Um, I'm not trying to knock Ferris, but I honestly don't know why they couldn't have put the inch marks there that would actually make make things a little simpler for people 
um, but they didn't this is what they have and now that I know what the numbers are it's not that big of a deal but it would be nice to uh, have the actual measurements there instead of just one through eight but again number four is three inch cut height and then like I said it starts at one and a half so one and a half two so basically two is the only one that's actually accurate the number two is actually two inches so if you just started at two going by half inches that's probably the easiest way to know what uh, height you're on so two two and a half three where I'm at now uh, three and a half four four and a half five so I don't know if that uh, I don't know if that helps you guys or not um, like I said I'm one of those people that I'm really picky about about that kind of thing I want all of my mowers to be set on the same height at every job so that you don't have you know areas that are cut higher or lower than the other just you know common sense I guess um, so it's important to me to know exactly what cu what cut height I'm at um, for my personal yard I'm probably gonna go on about a six which would be four inches um, because that's, I've been cutting it taller this year. Um, as the grass gets thicker and healthier, I've been you know, trying to keep it at a, a higher cut height. And uh, it seems to be working out. I mean, my, my lawn is looking great. So anyway, um, that's, the, uh, that's the measurements on the deck height. So for the guys that didn't already know or haven't had a chance to play with that yet, and what I did is I used my, uh, my blade guide or my blade gauge so if you guys don't have one of these, I actually got this one from John Deere um, a couple of years ago, but it's really handy. So the little arrow points it at whatever height. So example, this is three inches right there. And what you do is you slide this under your deck and you put this, this end right underneath the tip of the cutting edge. Okay, so the, you can measure front of the blade and back of the blade. It's usually what I do and there's, there's a little bit of a pitch, but that's uh, you know for accuracy that's what I do so uh, again measured at the measured at the front measured at the back but put the put this little ball end or little tube end right underneath the tip of the cutting edge and then when it's touching and the gauge is flat on the ground the arrow will be pointing at the height and so it's pointing at exactly three inches on the number four and like I said I, I checked every number and they're exactly half inch increments. So, but but this thing's really handy to have if you guys don't have one of these. Um, it, it was just a few bucks, and worth every penny because I've I've adjusted or made adjustments on every every mower deck I've ever had to get the uh, the blade height and the pitch the way I want it, and and most importantly to get the uh, blade cut height matching what it says on the mower. Um, every mower that I have actually has the the increments the measurements you know from from wherever it starts we'll just say two inches all the way to five inches um, so whatever it says on that gauge I want the deck to match that perfectly and so I've made adjustments on all of mine but anyway uh, this is the FW15 hydro with the swivel casters and uh, just kinda wanted to give you guys an overview and show you just a few things that I've done to it already let me uh, let me spin this over here, and I'll show you the I'll show you the side without the chute, so you can get a get a look at that. Um, I honestly like the look of it better without the chute. It's just a beefy, beefy little mower, guys. Um, and again, I'll probably figure out some kind of a some kind of a chute block system to have in place when I need it. But for now. Um, It'll be fun like that. I'm really anxious to get this thing out and put it to the test. So, thanks for watching, guys. Get out there and make some money, and we'll catch you on the next one.